Say hi. Hi. I'm Amber Rodriguez, and you're watching The Recount Podcast. Welcome everybody to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. You know, that man who leads you up this thing called ma- called wrestling, this mountain called wrestling. Call me your Sherpa for the day. And as every Sherpa, we have great guides and that's what I need. So I go out and find people who are more veteran than me. So it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring and today you can find this man a part of new texas pro bcw smw texas pro gcwa swe which by the way i have to say swe the promotion wise one of my favorites vcw acw and tasw uh, tasw he is mr stutacular bryson scott <laughs> what's up everybody how's it going it's actually no longer Mr. Spectacular. I am now the lost cause. The lost cause. You know what? It's cool. But, you know, both both names. I like both names. Those are really fun, though. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm 33 now, so I can't be too much of a stud anymore. I can't I can't be still in Shawn Michaels' stick of being the heartbreak kid forever. I mean, you, you could. And, like, people would just have to deal with it. <laughs> I guess, but, <laughs> but the last cause. I did I like it. How, did you, how, how did you come up with that? A horrible, horrible haircut. Honestly, <laughs> I, I, it was just a weird haircut idea. I just got out of the army and stuff like that, and um, I just cut my hair and I combed it a certain way, and it was just, it was real goofy. And it stood out, and I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna call that spectacular, you know, just something to stand out at that point in time, you know, because that's what I need. And um, it took it took weirdly because at the time when I first started the gimmick, I wasn't very studly. I was very flabby and <laughs> everything else. So um, as it developed. And I actually got more into shape. The 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 meaning of it kind of died down to me mm. because it was more of like throwing it in the fan's face of oh this is what you expect to see, but this is what I am and I'm still good at it, you know, and and that's just the way I saw it, you know, and. You know, the fa- the fans can be very ruthless, <laughs> definitely in 2020, 2021. You know, they're just, dude, they're not like they were in 96 during the Attitude Era, which was still great times, but they're ruthless as shit now. Oh, yeah. Fans are definitely like, they, they know what they want, and they just, they will let you know you are not it. <laughs> oh, trust me, I felt it. <laughs> let me ask man who is bryson scott um it's actually my son that's sitting on the couch over there but um <laughs> i am a six-year army veteran that um i was actually trained before i joined the military for professional wrestling um my dad was a professional wrestler um on the east coast up and down Georgia, South Carolina. So that's why I originally started training was to have that bond with him. Once uh, we fell out, I just kept to it to kind of, kind of put it to him, you know, Um, that's just my attitude. You know, if, if you shun me out, I'm going to push and be the best that I can be to prove you shouldn't have pushed me away. And, um, Unfortunately, my dad's seen that now, you know, my dad's never done like extra work. He's never done anything like that, but I've had the awesome ability to do that many times. Excuse me. And um, that's just something that like, yeah, I love my dad for the, the connection we have with wrestling. But other than that, that's the only connection we have. 
Oh, well, that's kind of, I mean, that kind of sucks, but it's kind of cool in the same token that you guys still have that, that you had that bond. But, oh, yeah. But, uh, well, we don't have a connection anymore. <laughs> right, right. But then, like, but. you're able to, you know, you continue pushing yourself. And like you said, man, it's, it's funny because, like, I feel like people who get into wrestling, it's either, you know, you really loved it or you're really trying to prove to people, like, hey, oh, like, I can do this and more. And it's kind of cool to see that you're, you know, like, before we started recording, you were talking about how, like, you're hanging out with people from ROH, you know? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, man, I love this business. Like, um, it was like seven, eight years old, like when my dad was still training and stuff like that. Um, I would I would go to training sessions and he would be um, sitting there rolling out with like Ricky Morton and Jimmy Boogie Woogie Man Valiant. And I'm just like, what the hell is going on, you know? And they asked me to ref it. And I'm just like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know? At that time, I didn't know how much impact I would have on my career now. And it's just amazing. No, that's awesome. I, I get my daughter involved, too, because, like, I think it's fun. It's kind of like our oh. – we have a few different ways to connect, but having her there is just – it's always fun to do and just, like, watch her role and stuff like that. And she she gets I, into it. She has her own little character now, too. <laughs> oh, I, I have a seven-year-old little daughter and a six-year-old little boy, and they love it. Um, matter of fact, one of the shows that I wrestled here in San Antonio – a while back, um, they were sitting in the ring and they were rolling before the show. And MVP was just sitting there watching them, just loving it. Like, dude, this is awesome. Like, and he took pictures of my kids. Like, this is great to see. And that's just one thing I love about wrestling is I make so many memories with my kids now. It's not about what I do in the business anymore. It's about the memories that I make with my kids. My daughter's creeping up on me right now. She wants to make a little debut. What's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> it's funny because like I have a I have a video of my daughter um, actually doing a Canadian destroyer with me. <laughs> no way, really? Yeah. That's dope. I'll, I'll send it to you after, so that way you can see. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Hell yeah! I'm, I'm so down to see her knocking out a Canadian destroyer. That's hey, awesome. Hey, um, my mom is had doubt. Your mommy fell asleep watching TV again? Okay, go. <laughs> All right, so, go. Daddy's working. Go. I have cap. <laughs> I'm not going to see, like, look, like, there's there's my son, like, just, in, in a, you know, interfering. In <laughs> so trust me. He's just like, hey, dad, dad, pay attention. No, I'm working. <laughs> um, so speaking of things, man, like speaking of like travels and stuff like that, and like you said, you've had kind of a, a, a long career. I'm just curious, like what's been the worst bump you've taken? The worst bump I've taken? Yep. <laughs> uh, um, I've taken a couple within the, the last couple months have given me concussions. So um, I'd probably say one of those because it's put me out the longest besides when I went on deployment. So, like, like I haven't wrestled in, like, three, four months now, and it sucks really bad. <laughs> but um, I'm cleared to go now. I'm supposed to wrestle on the 25th of September, so I'm really excited for that because that's also my daughter's birthday. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, and she's pretty stoked because she's getting a belt and everything like that. So. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, sling is the family thing here, and we. She's like, Daddy, all I've ever wanted was my own belt, and da 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 da. So I'm like, all right, we gotta get it. We have to. <laughs> you gotta earn it, though. You gotta get in that ring. You gotta, you gotta pin. Oh, you gotta pin for the championship. Oh, trust me, we got that worked out. So. <laughs> So aside from okay, so aside from getting some concussions off some bad bumps, man, like what's the hardest that you've been hit? <laughs> um <laughs> funny, funny story. Um, I'm working a like a 60 man battle royal in Dallas, and Brian Cage is in there, and he comes in and I'm giving him like rib shots. And I'm giving him rib shots and he's selling it. And I look up to him and I go. I'm not expecting you to sell this. And he laughs and pushes me off and goes, watch the boot. Me being the five, 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 six guy that I am, I throw my face to it 
expecting the big boot to the face, and he just throws it full force, <laughs> like he's throwing it at my chest, and just like nails my jaw. <laughs> and so when we get to the back, Brian's like, "Dude, I'm so sorry." I'm like, "It's whatever." <laughs> like I'm good. <laughs> But it was, it was good times. Like, we still laugh about it every time I see it. That's awesome. I know, like, uh, recently, like, a friend of mine was like, hey, we're going to run a practice match, five minutes. You know, just I'm going to act like I'm – and mind you, he hadn't been in the ring for a little bit. And so he's like, yeah, and I'll just – I'll throw a farm. i hit you with a strike. And then you just sell to the ropes. And then, like, then he goes, here comes the strike. And he punched me, like, in the face because his timing was off. And – uh <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the same thing, man. He's like, dude, I'm so sorry. And like, and even like a week later, he'll like just randomly text me, dude, I feel so bad. I punched you in the mouth. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> stop apologizing. It's over with. It happens to me a lot too with my chops. Like, I broke two of my own fingers chopping somebody. <laughs> so some people don't like chop, taking chops from me anymore. They're just like, <laughs> What up? What we're talking about a bass? No, no chops. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's funny. <laughs> so, I actually have a video clip that I will send you after this of somebody blocking one of my chops, and it's actually a name, so it's even better. Nice. <laughs> so, what's been like one of the hardest lessons that you've learned in the sport? Nobody truly gives a shit about you. <laughs> like, 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 honestly, to be straight up about it, like, I've, I've been around this my whole life. I've been doing it. I started training at, in 2007, you know. Nobody truly gives a shit about you. You know, they're worried about their promotion or their spot or something like that. You know, so always look out for you before looking out for anybody else. And that, that might get me heat from a lot of promoters and shit like that. But as as one of the boys talking to the boys, that's just the way it is. Make sure you take care of yourself first. I like that. I like that because it just it, it, it works in life because we talk about it all the time. Like when you're on an airplane and those little masks come down, they don't say take care of the person next to you. They always say take yours and then get the other person. So yeah, I like I like that. That's actually some some good advice. Exactly. So speaking of advice, I'm very curious as well. If you could give advice to up and coming wrestlers, what advice would you give to those up and coming wrestlers? Um you know, um a lot of people preach on seminars and stuff like that. I would um I'm big on seminars, but I would pick and choose which ones you go to. Like, I've, I've done a lot. Some have been more helpful than others. Some haven't. But at the same time, I've learned a lot. You know, Like, I've done Zack Sabre Jr. seminars. And then I've done Rudy Boy Gonzalez seminars. <laughs> you know, two totally different things, you know. One will teach you stuff that you'll remember forever and the other the seminar will just be like why did I even waste money to get yelled at you know and, and I'm not talking about Zack Sabre Jr. yelling at you because <laughs> he's a he's a professional yeah you know and I'm not trying to shoot on anybody here but I'm just saying you, you asked me from my point of view on that and that's what it is is go to real legit seminars that they're by people who have actually legit done something. Like, I haven't done anything and people have come to my seminar. I've held, like, one or two seminars and people have come to it. I'm like, what the hell are y'all people doing here? You know? Like, I haven't done anything. <laughs> but at the same time, like, I got to see people out of that group that they might not acknowledge it now, but, like, I called those people out of that group. I put them on national TV, you know, um, like legit. They won't say that now, 
but I did that. Um, Bahala Club did that. You know, not just me, but Bahala Club did that. But they won't. They won't say shit about that. You know, right. That, that, just one of those things in the business. <laughs> it sucks, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 got, I got what you're saying. I got what you're saying. But no, I like that though. Like, you know, go to seminars, but just be, you know, be weary of like who you're choosing. Cause I know like the first seminar I did was actually Rich Swan's seminar. And uh, uh-huh. yeah, I, got a, I got a lot out of that. Oh my Bro. God, that was so much fun. <laughs> if, if you know me, I ain't got nothing but love for Rich. Like, um, my first extra work was with Rich, you know? I got to work rich on 205 Live. Um, Sue Young and my wife have known each other for a while, you know, and just, yeah, it's just a bond there. Like, Rich is a great guy, and like, Sue's a great girl. And like, they definitely, they're definitely good for wrestling. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't say anything better than that, is they're good for wrestling. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I no doubt. Um, all right, man. So you've been in the business for a long time. We got to talk, man. So when you go to a new locker room that you've never been into, I need to know one do and one don't of the locker room. Uh, always when I walk in, like, no matter, like, a lot of people know me. Or I'm not trying to sound egotistical by that, by, but, like, maybe by bad heat or something like that. But no matter what, at the same time, no matter what, go in there, shake hands with everybody, be a professional. You know, show them that no matter what, at the end of the day, their safety is number one. Because that's what it's all about. No matter the heat, no matter all that bullshit, safety is number one. You know, safety and putting on a show for the thing. Um, don't. Don't be an egotistical prick and think you're somebody, you know? Like, like I've had some TV guys that come into the locker room and act like that, and then I've had some that come in and help set up chairs and help tear down the ring, you know? It, I mean, to each their own, but, like, when you come in like that, it shows more respect to, for where you've been. And that's what means more to me as a guy that's seen his dad wrestle and I used to set up chairs as a seven-year-old, you know. I like that. I like that. And I, I, I love I love the fact that you're just able to speak on this from, like, from, like, a, like you know, like a seven-year-old standpoint to, like, you know, currently where you're at standpoint. So you, you have, like, this oh, long ass 33-year-old. Go ahead and say it. Oh, no, nah, I just – I wasn't going to say. I wasn't going to say because I – I'll say I, it for I, you. <laughs> no, 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 because I'm 36. So I, I was – Really? Like, yeah. Yeah, making me look bad. And I yeah. just shaved today. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was like, I don't want to tell him that I'm 36 because, like, I just turned 36. So I was like, we just just keep it low. <laughs> Man, I need to get some Botox up. <laughs> it's, it's funny because you mentioned that you were prior military and I was prior military as well. So I did six years active duty Air Force. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for your service. Hey, you too, man. Thank you. So, those are all my hard hitting questions. So we got to get into the second best segment of this podcast. People will be like, well, if that's if this is the second, what's the first? The first is the Red Dogs Power Rankings that you can find every Sunday on the Three Count Podcast, the bait show. But this is the three count podcast, 10 count questions. And Bryson, this is how it works, man. I'm gonna fire off 10 questions at you rapid fast. And uh it's whatever first answer comes to mind, and that's your answer. <laughs> I'm down with it. Let's do it. By the way, three count podcast. I'm so down for this. Shane Helms, Shannon Moore, Evan Courageous. One of my f- my favorite groups ever. <laughs> yes, the three count. I love I love that group too. <laughs> it's weird to think like how many future stars, like those two, two of the future stars came out of that group. And I'm like, and then and then just Shannon, like and, and uh Shane, their their minds for the business, like. Like Shane's still a producer now, and he's just fucking amazing, man. It's fun. I love it. I'm a huge mark for them guys. <laughs> so let's put on an imaginary timer for added pressure. <laughs> and here we go. 
SmackDown or Raw? SmackDown. Favorite movie? Go in 60 seconds. A, the original or the new one? Is the new one? What, I'm talking about the one with Nicolas Cage, or are you talking about the yeah, original? Yeah, Nicolas okay. Cage. <laughs> I mean, it was another one. Yeah. Uh, That's horrible. Yeah. Boo already. <laughs> Burn it to the ground. PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. Favorite color? Green. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Favorite tag team? Steiner Brothers. Texas Tech or Texas? Texas. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I know how this is going <laughs> I'm not even from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> favorite podcast. What are you guys doing? Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite podcast? Three Count Podcast, right? Does. Yeah, Three Count Podcast. That's what she said. Nominate <laughs> one person that you want to see on this show. Um, I would say Nathan Bradley. All right. Nathan Bradley out of Houston. Definitely. And then last but not least, my favorite question to ask everybody, but you have a little one in the back, so we're very careful about this. Favorite curse word? I want to beat you. Oh, like this. <laughs> hey, I <laughs> there it is for you. Hey, All right, go. You're not a big kid. Go. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> Well, there you go. that is my 10 count question. So all I need from you now is to let our viewers and our listeners know. Oh, you're breaking up. You. Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Uh, come on now. Oh, are we back? Hold on. Hold on. I think we might be. We there? Are you there? Can you hear me now? Here. Are you there? Yes, I am. All right. We're back now. All right, bet. So all I need from you is to let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. All right. What's up, everybody? This is The Lost Cause Bryson Scott. You can find me on Facebook at The Lost Cause Bryson Scott, on Instagram at The Lost Cause BS, and Twitter at The Lost Cause BS. There you go. So that's where you can find this man. And you guys know what this means. It means we have to take this home. And this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. And me, your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. Yes, your Sherpa. But even the Sherpas need to have some guidance. And so it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. And tonight, you see him right there. It is Bryson Scott is now entering the ring. So you guys know what to do. Tune into the next episode and be there or you legit just wait till this episode ends. Let the outro play. And then you know what? The next episode is going to play for us. Peace. Or you be square. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there. Find us at the Three Count underscore pod. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to YouTube.com. Give us a subscribe. Turn the bell on. Turn on notifications. Leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the Three Count Podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the Three Count Podcast also has merchandise oh, at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash the three count pod please go buy our t-shirts we love you guys and we hope you love us too so show us some support please <laughs>